Welcome to the eSports Mastery Series. We're here at the Bond University eSports Hub, and I'm joined by Brendan, the COO of The Chiefs. Welcome, Brendan. Thanks for having me. Awesome. We have a few questions from the audience that have come through socials. So the first one, based on a holistic approach to eSports, performance coaching in eSports is a relatively new aspect. Mm -hmm. Can you explain why a holistic approach is key to performance in eSports players? Yeah, so I guess why it's important. Well, I think if we want the eSports industry to really be like a, a long-term sustainable industry, I think player well-being really needs to be at the forefront of everything we do. Previously, I would say maybe before the last five years, performance coaching really wasn't a thing. I like to call it the Wild West where it was just, you would grind through players and you would see a lot of players come up, they'd have their, their time and you know, a long career would be a player would retire at 22, right? Yeah. And, which is very, very young. Mm. So with performance coaching in esports, we're able to increase the player well-being, which then increases their career length. And then because we advocate this holistic um, approach, which advocates a lot of balance as well. Previously, uh, esports players retire with no education and no work experience, and that's not very good or sustainable for their long-term careers after esports. So I think we advocate this really healthy lifestyle with balance. We do have pro players that are studying as well or, or getting some sort of work experience. So when they do eventually retire, and if they don't get an industry job, they don't just go work at Maccas for the rest of their lives. <laughs> yeah. And I guess on that, um, in relation to the health and well-being starting to be embedded into esports, have you started to see the benefits of that now through that education and new approach that yeah that you have yeah so it's really easy to be proactive rather than reactive a lot of the um healthy gaming programs we do are targeted towards that next generation of young gamers mm -hmm. so if we can teach them how to balance gaming um how to find things that you know fill their bucket if gaming is the only thing that is giving them any sort of dopamine at the moment, like we help them broaden their lives a bit more. So gaming isn't just their, their only thing that gives them any sort of fulfillment. Um, so we do see uh, players enjoying gaming more. We do see like players are just enjoying life more um, and they're less burnt out. So it's really hard to work backwards when a player is already playing like 70 hours a week and they are the best, you know, because they come to us and I say, well, what if I could convince you, you can play better by playing less? And they're like, well, I'm already the best, you know? Um, so it's really hard to convince them that, well, if everyone's playing on half a tank, you know, you can have an edge by implementing these like well-being practices. Um, and we do see like a lot of positive results once they do start coming to the party. We've had a lot of our pro teams, it's taken a little while to get them on board, but we see because they are healthier, they're actually performing better on the international stage. So it yeah. comes back and it's better for us because we are getting better results as like an organization. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, so another question that we have is, why is it important to try and teach healthy gaming as early as possible in esports players' journey? Yeah, so I think if we can teach these healthy habits at a young age or when they are starting to get into the sports industry you know like teaching things like balance or like um, structured practice or training with intent things like that there's a lot of uh, ways they can streamline mm -hmm. their their journey um, you know there's not no wasted time they're actually training with intent and they actually get a lot better a lot quicker but also outside of that they learn how to implement these strategies when they go to university or you know when they go live by themselves and you know they're out, out of home and they have to get a job and become an adult you know like it's all these really healthy human strategies that transcend gaming itself so what are some of the key pillars to good performance for players well obviously sleep is a really really important one um you know you can't play on half a tank essentially and, and expect to be at your best mm -hmm. nutrition is also really important something we found is that um Caffeine has negative effects, long-term effects on our players as well if they become dependent on it. Um, just food in general, you know, if they have them feeling sluggish, we need them to feel alert. Um, training with intent also, like structured training, is also really, really key as well. 
So I would say those are probably like the, the three. And, and, and I would say mindfulness is the fourth. Like if we can teach them, um, a lot of young gamers don't really get around meditation, but like if there's ways to help them deal with um, the adverse side of mental health that comes with really high pressure situations, like a lot of um, pro players, say for example, Rocket League, the pro age is now 13. So you can be competing on the international stage at 13, which is really, really young to be dealing wow. with those sort of stresses, right? So yeah. if we can help them learn how to deal with that, mm. um, yeah, they become a better player for it. Yeah, and I love how those indicators can actually, you know, they're for any athlete, to be honest, they don't have to be in esports to have more sleep, nutrition, yeah. even meditation. So yeah. there is a common thread there for, for all athletes. So for an, an esports organization, how important is a good coaching and player support structure? Well, for us, uh, as like a management team of an of a organization, leaning on coaches who do know a lot about their specific game so they can structure the best possible team is, is insanely important, right? Like we got into League of Legends a year ago and I knew nothing about League of Legends. So the first thing we had to do was find the right coaching structure. And I think a really good, a really good organization will build a team from the top down, right? So there'll be a management and then we'll build our coaching structure and then we'll build our performance coaches as uh, coaches and managers and then the players come last. A lot of teams do it backwards. They'll just put five really good players on a team together right. and expect them to do well and a lot of the time it doesn't it doesn't work, right? Because their personalities might not mesh or they might not have the right play styles. Individually they might be really good, but they might not be, you know, a, a unit and they might not be able to function as a team well. So uh, having the right people that can identify that at, on a coaching level is the most important thing for us from a management point of view. Yeah, definitely. I love how leadership is thought about first before anything else. So our next question from socials, what are some ways we can bridge the performance gap between oceanic esports and international teams? That is the big question, right? So I say we're probably five to 10 years behind EU and NA when it comes to performance. Um, we don't have the venture capital, the backing that a lot of these big international teams do. We're obviously a small region, we're on an island in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's really hard for us to get good practice because we are, again, a smaller population, um, so there's less gamers and we're unable to play or practice against better teams overseas because of ping and stuff like that and latency issues. So it's, it's the, the way that we can bridge the gap without any of those things is to get these healthy um, performance strategies set in place and these structures set in place so we can sort of like breed these really high performance players and get them to come through and then even if the result of their journey in Australian esports is to go overseas well maybe that's our place in the world we're, we're a feeder club for the rest of the world right but if we can produce these high quality athletes that then go overseas um, then you know that's that's also great yeah absolutely so we do have a question from um, the Bond University Esports Club. Mm -hmm. How do you handle burnout among professional gamers? Yeah, so burnout's a really, really key issue that we're sort of trying to delve down into. Obviously, burnout is another word we use for dopamine exhaustion. Um, so obviously, for those of you who are watching, you might, may or may not know what dopamine is. It's a neurotransmitter in your brain that um, stimulates reward, essentially, or um, but you can get burnt out from dopamine. So, you know, um, if you're overstimulated too much too often, your receptors actually dial back because you're getting too much dopamine. The problem with that is that your brain doesn't know the difference between dopamine you're getting from a video game and dopamine you're getting from hanging with your friends or your favorite food. So your, your actual life satisfaction goes down across the board. Yeah. So burnout is not just you burnt out in game, you're burnt out in life and it has implications on new relationships, your work, your study, you know, so it's, it, there's a lot of a broader talk that we have to have about burnout and how to combat it. Um, a lot of pro players have become pro because gaming is their hobby and gaming is their lifestyle and, and they love gaming, but you know, what happens when that one thing is actually burning you out? So. How do we combat that? Um, it's actually playing less, as, as simple as that sounds, but it's also 
finding things in life to add and not subtract. Um, if we go all the way back to teaching healthy um, habits to young gamers, something we advocate for parents is if they're gaming too much, don't just take the games away because that's bad, especially if it's the only thing that's giving them some sort of dopamine or fulfillment. Mm. We want to add things that press on the same parts of your brain or give you that same sort of fulfillment as your video games do, whether you're like a creative gamer or a social gamer, but say for, for the pros, competitive gamers. So find things in the real world that give you that same sort of competitive fulfillment. It could be a team sport, it could be learning an instrument, you know, like something that is competency driven. It's the idea of you getting better at something or, you know, you learning something. Um, add, add that stuff to your life. That way, when you do go back to your games, you are getting way more fulfillment as well because you're less burnt out. You know, you, your bucket, in a sense, is filled from all these different aspects. Yeah. And if you are feeling really burnt out, if it's, you know, if you're at the point where you're like, wow, I've, I've actually noticed I'm burnt out because the problem with being dopamine exhausted, I think we spoke about this earlier, is that you don't notice it until way down the track, yes. right? There's a difference between cognitive athletes and physical athletes in that you can't go to the gym for 10 hours a day, sleep for two hours a day, gym 10 hours, sleep two hours. Your body will just conk out. With cognitive athletes or esports pros, you, you can. You can play 10 hours a day, sleep two hours, you know, and, and do it all over again. Um, is it sustainable? No, but you won't notice the repercussions until later down the track. And then it's really hard to undo that. But if you are at that point, um, yeah, dopamine detox, you can, you can Google it. Like it's like a whole two weeks, no screens thing. And it's, it's quite cold Turkey, but we've seen really good results. And when our teams come back from overseas, especially like, uh, our Rainbow Six Siege team has had a really successful year. They got top eight in the world, um, at the international at the start of the year and then they they didn't really have time to rest and they went as soon as they came back they started practicing and playing again in the next split and then going to the next major and they've only just come back from that and obviously six months of straight practice burns anyone out yes um so they came back and we made them have like a mandatory two to three week holiday sort of thing you know no gaming at all um so if yeah if you're feeling burnt out or if your team's just finished a competitive season take a break, make sure you take a break. You're not gonna, you're not gonna lose all your skill. If anything, you're gonna come back fresher and better. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time today and valuable insights. No worries. Greatly appreciate it.